Hey guys, it's Mr. Abby coming at you from the uh, Academy of Science and Citizenship up in Syracuse. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. It was beautiful out, so I hope you guys got outside a little bit. Um, since we're going to be doing a lot of exploring in nature this time of year, and since I kind of wanted to make a transition, we've done a lot of biology and a little bit of chemistry, I want to make us a trans uh, make a transition a little bit into physics, and we, I want to talk a little bit about light over the next couple weeks since we've got a lot more of it. Um, in the name of that, I want to show you guys one of the one of the most exciting light-based experiments I know of. Usually I like to keep the materials a little simple for you guys, stuff that everybody has around the house, but for this experiment, not everybody might have these kinds of materials. So I'm going to take a little bit easy on you guys this week since it's a short week and the materials can be a little tough to come by. Um, some of you guys might have these things, some of you might not. So I already started some notes. There's a few things I wanted to prep us with. Today we're gonna learn how we can make a laser microscope at home. It sounds really cool, laser microscope, right? Um, I thought it was really cool when I learned how to do it and I still love doing them. So I, I got a couple notes though. I feel like we need to prep some ideas before we get into this experiment. So again, I wanna take it a little easy on you guys so that you don't have to send me in notes specifically. Um, and I got some notes started up for us as it is. So if you have a magnifying glass at home or a microscope, you might notice that the lens for it, the, the glass part, isn't perfectly flat. They're a little curved, right? So like my flashlight here, you'll notice that it's, it kind of magnifies the light inside there. And you'll notice that it's not a flat lens there. It's curved. So it increases the light. That's what a magnifying glass does. It can increase the image that you're looking at when you use a magnifying glass, but that's because it focuses light. That's what that curve does. If you have any 3D glasses like I do here, I got a cardboard one, you'll notice that those are kind of curved too, and that zooms in. What it does is it focuses that light. So I've got kind of an image here for you. The purple here is your lens, and the orange is your light. So when the light comes into a curved lens, it doesn't just pass right through it like it would normal glass. It curves in before it goes back out into your eye. So what it's doing is it's curving and focusing that light so you can see something bigger or so your light can be brighter. And you might ask yourself what I got going on here too. It's a little hard to see, but another thing that we need for this experiment, we, we want to look at the fact that when you curve light, it magnifies things. The next thing we want to look at is that water has something called tension, surface tension. What it, water does is water really likes to stick to itself. So when you pour water into a glass like I have over here, I'm going to switch my camera around so you can see it better. When you got water in a glass like this, you might notice that when you pour it really full, do you see how the water is actually up above? Well, when you pour water and it fills up all the way, it will actually hump a little bit over the top of the cup because it wants to stick to itself more than it wants to pour. If you keep pouring it, of course, it's going to pour out the edge. But it wants to stick to itself. So those are two things we're going to use to make a laser microscope today. Those are two fe uh, physics uh, features that we want to use to make the laser microscope. The things we actually need is you're going to need a laser. Now this is going to be a part that can be kind of dangerous so if you do have the materials around you want your parents to help you with this experiment probably hold the laser so nobody gets shined in the eye. These can hurt your eyes very badly especially if you can tell this is kind of big compared to the average laser you've seen this is a very high powered one because I find that a bright laser works really well and particularly a green laser works really well. Without much more ado, the next thing you need is just a syringe. And I know people go, oh no, a syringe. This isn't a hypodermic needle, it's just a syringe. So a lot of people when they hear syringe, they think needles and stuff like that. This is just, you find these a lot in if you have like children's acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Um, it's just something that you can use to give animals. This is actually from my animal medication kit, but uh, you might have seen some of these in the kits you get for giving kids medicine. You just suck it right up out of the jar and you can 
give your animals or kids a medication in liquid form. That's all it is. Very simple, nothing dangerous about this part. So what I'm gonna do is, this part gets a little tricky. So um, what I've done in the past is I can get a little water in my hand if I haven't washed my hands and you can just suck it right up on your hands. You get some bacteria or something in there and then you can look at that through your microscope because this is where your sample is gonna be. Or I have an aquarium. So an aquarium is a really great place to get some mucky water where definitely we're gonna find some stuff living in there. So without much further ado, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn down my lights because it's too bright in here to run this experiment. You need a nice dark room to run a laser microscope experiment. I'll turn my camera around again. What's going on here? One more thing that you're gonna want is you see that I got here, I got two little wax blocks. One more thing you're gonna want is something to hold up your syringe because I don't have enough hands to do all this. So you can just hang your syringe from there. And we're gonna use surface tension. I'm gonna suck up my pond water. Pond water is a really good option for this too, although this is aquarium technically. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down in my little thing here. Now we're not ready yet because here comes the hard part. you got to get, use that surface tension whoop, to get just a whoop, little droplet. Very good. To hang from your syringe. That's the tricky part and I've been doing okay with it so far. So you just want that little, you see that little droplet hanging from my syringe. And that is going to be the lens of your laser microscope. Now you see that uh, that the curved, or the, uh, the little droplet is curved, just like a lens. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna try to set you guys up, and we're gonna look at this far wall behind my laser microscope, and we're gonna see what we project onto the wall making a microscope. Now that's just the laser light, but when I pass it through, when I pass it through that little bead of water, woo wee! You see all that stuff floating around in there? That is the maybe algae or bacteria that lives, well, it's kind of hard to keep it on that bead of water. Whoa. There we go. You see that stuff floating around in there? Now those might be algae or bacteria, but you can see them really well because what the water is doing is the water is acting like my magnifying glass. It's acting like my microscope. So the light is giving us the lens and that's magnifying everything. Woo! I just saw one turn. Pretty cool, huh? So the water acts like our lens and our laser microscope. Let's focus again. So because that water is curved, it acts like a lens for our laser microscope. It's kind of a tough experiment to pull off because you got to work that surface tension and everything like that. Um, and it helps to have a hand in there, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys do have the materials to make your own laser microscope, feel free to send me videos. It's kind of hard to do all those things at once, but it can be pretty cool when you can see what's in that water, especially if you think your hands are really clean. Go ahead and take a little bit of a syringe on that and see what you can see. Um, pretty simple materials. You just need that laser light. You need a syringe and some dirty water. Um, maybe a friend to hold up your syringe or your laser light and uh, let me know what you see. Uh, I thought that was a pretty cool one. We're going to be working a little bit more with light over the next coming weeks, but uh, let me know. You guys have a great week.